It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Today we're going to be starting um, the Baralti leg of the tournament, which if you look behind me here is this. Um, it's The Baralti in Time Agent are this big burly warrior race. So um, there's, we're going to be doing a series of uh, somewhat combative games um, that will feature some uh, elimination. So um, basically... The players in this game are, two people are going to be eliminated, and then in the next game, one person is going to be eliminated, one person in Warrior Knights, one person in Small World, and then I think I'm, I've, I've changed my mind, I think I'm going to end it with a two-player game of some sort. I kind of was avoiding two-player games more before, but I'm enjoying them more now, and I'm getting some more two-player games that I'd like to try out. Um, so this particular game we're going to be doing today, Empire make history on your living room floor is um, different than the other games I've been doing for several reasons. One and foremost, I think, is that I haven't played this game before. I did a, a little playthrough of one turn with a six-player affair just to, to kind of, you know, make sure I knew how to play. It's not complicated. I was able to do it. Um, and there, the, the other reason this is kind of different than other games I've done is there isn't a lot of information out there, at least that I'm aware of, on this game. There isn't a video yet, and I don't think I'm going to make one beyond this, um, this Real People video. So this might be all there is. Um, I'll just show you a little bit about the game. So as such, because of that, I'm going to, uh, maybe go into a little bit more detail about the game, because it's also, as you can see here, 204 out of 500. There's not a lot of these games out there. I I actually picked this up in this very small town on the peninsula, the Olympia Olympic Peninsula, where um, I was at a convenience store for I think five bucks, and the the game I think was made in 2000 or something like that. So that and it was in shrink wrap. So that means it's been sitting in a warehouse somewhere. I asked the guy where they got it, and it was from some like warehouse company in Illinois. I'm in Washington here, and that's where I bought the game. Um, but I, I love these kind of things, and I, you know, I, the price didn't hurt, but it, it has this very handmade quality, this very um, non-professional quality about it that I appreciate. Um, the game's been compared to Risk, and I think that's fair. Um, you know, you're you have these little things, units on the map, and you can fight each other by rolling dice. That's basically it. But that's not basically it, because you also have um, these cards here, and these cards have some rather dramatic effects, and we'll kind of get into those as we play, but as you can see, they go through through time, so there's a pseudo-historical feel. I like the, the quotes. They're, you know, the, whoever made this game spent some time on it, I think, and it was probably something they cared about. Um, quick thing a, a, a bit about the board. So here we have um, these flags are the headquarters. If you lose your headquarter, I think the goal of the game is to capture so many headquarters based on how many players are in the game. Um, the game also comes with these, which I did an unboxing video for this, and someone commented on these. This it's a this nice component, and they do have a really nice feel. Um, it's like a something you would press against your nipple, but you're supposed to put this on your headquarter. But I don't really know why. They're all the same color. They're all white, so I don't know why you wouldn't just put. A unit on there to show that it's yours because you have to have a unit on there anyway so I don't really know what those are for but they they do have a good feel um, so your headquarters great this is a technical space um, certain cards you have to place on a technical space and as long as you have control of that space you get some benefit all right then you have this gun space um, that's going to decide how many units you get every turn um, the gun spaces you control along with your flag um, Likewise, this is how many cards you draw. So however many spaces you have with this little hand symbol with the cards, it's how many cards you draw every turn. You also get to draw one for having your headquarter. And that's basically it. Uh, the, the goal is to, to wipe other people out, and that's what we're going to do. In the one turn I played, <laughs> it seemed like one person was almost gone. They were down to three spaces, and that was just in one turn of the game. So we could have some elimination pretty quick. I don't know if I'm going to play to the game's end. Um, if it's like Risk, this game could last forever for a really long time, and then I, I don't 
know if I want to do that. I might just go until two players are eliminated. I don't know. We'll see how, how things go as we get into it. So I just finished the Habsburg um, leg of this this multi-game Mega Turner. Whoops, I dropped a couple. I'm shuffling the cards down here and I dropped a couple. Um, and one thing I really appreciated about that leg is that there were multiple games in it, so you got to know the characters more. Um, this leg, there's going to be five games in it, so the people who... I keep dropping the cards, I'm sorry, I shouldn't talk and shovel at the same time, I'm a horrible multitasker. Um, the people who are are in this, this leg, we're going to really get to know, I think, um, which I'm excited for. I kind of wish I had had done that with the other legs of the tournament. I know like the Protestant leg, it's very, it was very quick and I don't feel like I really know um, Roadrunner, spoiler alert, um, as well as I do the, the winner of the Habsburg leg. Um, but that's, that's how it is. The next tournament I'm, I'm planning on having longer branches so that can have some more time to get to know the people before they're gone. All right, so here we go. First one is Pinky, and Pinky is a flight attendant. Her secret fantasy is to model for Vogue and keep all the clothes. An unusual fact about Pinky is she owns 350 pairs of shoes, and she still wants more clothes. That's, I don't know if you are into games, contain games, but that's kind of how I am. I own several, I don't think 350, but I would still love to own more. Um, maybe not now though, I kind of need some time to digest. I feel a little bit full. Uh, her pet peeve is people who spit when they talk or have things in their teeth. Now, I think that's a case where she, she's trying to have her cake and eat it too. If they spit when they talk, maybe they're spitting the things out that would be between their teeth. So which does she want? Does she want it between her teeth or does, does she want it airborne? She'd like to meet Gorbachev or Imelda to compare shoes. Her personal motto is, if you don't eat it, wear it, or spend it, you don't need it. So she would not like games. She's most proud of her shoes. That's a big surprise. She seems like very, um, very focused. Reputation in high school is popular, parentheses, good kid. So she's not one of those popular naughty kids. Three words that describe her are fun, independent, and carefree. So here we have Pinky, flight attendant, loves shoes. Bloop. All right, next, let's shuffle up some more. I drew two. I do again. All right, we have Weasel. Weasel's an elevator constructor. His secret fantasy is to win megabucks. An unusual fact about Weasel is he tells it like it is. His pet peeve is women drivers. Wow. He'd like to meet Angie Dickinson. And his personal motto is do the best you can with what you have. He's most proud of his family. His reputation in high school is funny. And three words that describe him are honest, sincere, friendly. That's Weasel. I didn't comment as much about him. I think we kind of got to get moving though. Um, I guess I'm not as interested in chauvinism as I am shoes. And I keep dropping cards. This is the worst perch for shuffling this large deck ever. And here we go. Next one is Mustache Destructo. His name is just Destructo. He's a computer nerd. His secret fantasy is to sail the Caribbean. That's his occupation as computer nerd. So I don't know if he's in the, there's a geek squad car. I don't know if you've seen that. Maybe he's in something like that. Um, his secret fantasy is to sail the Caribbean. An unusual fact is the only Jew ever to meet the Pope and go to Mass at the Vatican four times in a week. Interesting. I wonder what prompted... Okay. His pet peeve is stupid people. He'd like to meet Jacques Cousteau. His personal motto is when the going gets weird, the weird turn pro. And that's a quote from Hunter Thompson. He's most proud of his receding hairline. His reputation in high school is he loved to blow things up. Three words that describe him are creative, creative, and creative. And that is destructo. Yeah, it fits, it all fits. All right, let's shuffle it up again. Next one. Oh, I've played with her before, Vaughn. 
she was in um, she was in the review I did of Regatta. Uh, she's an intern counselor. I like it when they come back. I, I think repetition is nice with with people. It's nice to not always be meeting people for the first time. Her secret fantasy is to marry the man of her dreams and have an awesome wedding and honeymoon. An unusual fact is she has a birthmark shaped like a plum. Her pet peeve is people using the bathroom and not washing their hands. She'd like to meet Martin Luther King. I'm going to assume she, she'd like to meet Martin Luther King Jr., not his father. Um, her personal motto is make it happen. She's most proud of changes made. Reputation in high school is strong, determined, and three words that describe Vaughn are strong convictions, passionate, leader. Vaughn. All right, two more to go. This is a six-player game. You can play it with less. But you can play it with... All right, here we have... Ooh, that's a good smile. This is Sonny. He's a retired police officer. His secret fantasy is parachute jumping. I don't know if it's just parachute jumping or something involving parachute jumping. An unusual fact is he has a loving soul for a Scorpio. His pet peeve is the Massachusetts politics. He'd like to meet living the Pope, dead Napoleon. Living the Pope, dead Napoleon. Personal motto is motivation and control. <laughs> I don't know how that's a motto. <laughs> that's like a mantra. Personal mantra. Motivation and control. Motivation and control. Motivation. He's most proud of his three professional sons. Okay, this guy... <laughs> I don't know what a professional... I have a son, okay? But I, I think he's an amateur. I don't pay him a dime to, to be my son. I feed him, and I give him toys, I guess. His reputation in high school is not active in affairs. His words are just... His words are strange to me. I don't understand what he's saying. I don't know if it's my mood or if it's his words um, or a combination, but... Sunny, something about him. Uh, three words that describe him are genuine, quiet, and sober. Yeah, I don't think he needs anything to drink. He can just... All right. Um, one more. One more person. I'm excited to see what happens when these Titans butt heads. Here we go. It's... Junior. He's a systems analyst. His secret fantasy is to be a fighter pilot. An unusual fact about Junior is he's born on Valentine's Day. His pet peeve is photographers. He'd like to meet a famous photographer. Just because he wants to, like, really hate him? Or, I don't... This man is a man of contradictions. Oh, you know what? I bet he said that because they were taking his picture at the time. Um, I don't know. Alright, his personal motto is live and let live. He's most proud of his job as a systems analyst. His reputation in high school is a music lover, and three words that describe him are honest, humorous, and curious. All right, we've got a full deck of people to play with. Let's get to the living room floor. I was tempted to actually play this game on the living room floor. I think if I had, well, anyway, but I'm going to put it on the table because I don't know how long it's going to take. And my living room floor, I don't think it would last very long. I, I think I'd have to restart. It would be very frustrating. So let's go to it. All right, we have our player order. I rolled, I had the color set out already, and I just rolled the player order. Uh, the highest person, um, Destructo, goes first, and so on. So they have to set up, and here's um, a case where uh, their answers made it easy. So Destructo, he would like to sail the Caribbean, so it's very easy to choose where his cap capital should be, right there, the closest one to the Caribbean. And then likewise, Pinky here, she wants to meet Gorbachev, so we'll stick her in Russia. And we are all set up. So how setup works, just in case you don't know, is people just take turns placing uh, a token that has to be adjacent to a token they've already placed once everyone's had their initial um, headquarters token. So as you can see, oh, and then after you can't place one anymore, on land spaces, I'm assuming. I, you have to make some interpretations with these rules. Um, then you have to stack up on uh, existing hexes. Um, I ruled that you can't stack on existing hexes until you're fully expanded, um, you know, bounded by water. So, as you can see, I think Vaughn really lost out on this. Um, she 
she doesn't have a lot of icons on on her land. She only has four, and two of them are the same. She has no additional armies. Um, she decided to kind of fill out Australia before she moved up. And um, who's orange here? Sunny. That's right. Sunny grabbed this this gun before she could get to it, so she lost out there. Everyone else, you know, is kind of in. Similar similar positions. I think um, you know South America seems like a a nice spot because they really don't have to contend with anyone except for North America, um, and that's where Destructo is right now. You know the whole this area there. There's a lot of mixing. North America is kind of sandwiched between Europe, South America, and then the sort of Australian forces over here. So we'll begin with uh, Destructo's turn, and I'll report back. All right, so the turn begins with card play. All the players start out with two cards, and then at the end of the turn, they get to draw more based on uh, how many of these spaces they control. So Destructo, he started out with Guerrilla Warfare. Now, here's a case where you're going to need to be creative if you ever happen to own this game. Um, these are supposed to be linked with a particular space, as I mentioned earlier, a technical space. Um, however, the they say to play the card on the space, but the card's bigger than the space. So what I'm doing is I'm using these dice. Uh, you know, the one die goes to the one event. That that seems to work fine. And you know, if you there's exactly 12 spaces, I think. So if you kind of divide it up so that you know some of the numbers are on this side and some of the numbers are on, on this side, it's easy to do. So what that does is it lets him he gets a bonus to his combat roll due to surprise. Roll one die. Rolls of nine or ten are hits, and they're ten-sided dice. Roll this after this roll. Normal combat must begin. All right. The conventional army loses if it does not win. The gorilla wins if it does not lose. Henry Kissinger, and he also has another card which he played face down. Now they, these face down cards um, can be revealed at some point to do something. Um, cards are in two different types. There's one cards and two cards. Two basic cards types. You can play one one card and one two card every turn. And anyway, there's some rules for you. So now um, Destructo is going to be attacking. He's attacking with these three units. He's attacking this space right here. Alright, so he's got three to two. First he's got to roll his Guerrilla Warfare die. Well, and actually, I think we'll have black be attack and white be defense. That's kind of the classic way of doing it. Oh, it did not work. So here's how combat works. We have two white dice for defense there, and three black dice for attack. We're just going to roll them all. Blomp, blomp. And then we, we match up the highest of each. All right, so there's the highest, there's the middle, and the lowest is just by itself. So as we can see, Destructo won the high one, so going to lose a unit. This is Weasel. Alright, they tied, so they're each going to lose a unit on the middle. And that's actually going to be enough for him to take it. So he gets to go in with his, as many as he wants from the space. Not this one though. Ooh, and on his other, his next attack, the Guerrilla Warfare die paid off. And he is going to, I think he's just going to move one up there. Pinky just completed her turn. Um, as you can see, she's got a, a, a wider area to defend than uh, Destructo did. She only made one attack, which is up here. She took this uh, card draw space. She seems to prefer the card drawing spaces. Um, she's defended them more heavily, and she has quite a few. She was able to draw several cards at the end of her turn, so that should give her some powerful options on her next turn. All right, Weasel played politics right here in uh kind of in between Alaska and Canada. Uh, that gives him a certain defense. Um, and then after that, he played Civil War. Now this is a handy combination of cards. One's a one card, the other's a two, so he's able to play both. He's playing Civil War quite rationally, I think, on Destructo here. So he can cause two of Destructo's, um, two adjacent spaces of Destructo's, 
and control them because some civil war erupted probably from over expansion so i think he's going to have this one attack this one right here and i guess he's got to go adjacent doesn't he I guess we'll have this one attack this one. All right, so we'll have three against two, and then a two on two. This is all destructos. You know, so you can kind of see how um, the, the cards are, have some very potent effects. So attacker one there, and the defender one there, and he's going to rule that the attack continues. And I. I'm not sure what happens with this extra die. I, you know, I was unclear at one point as to whether or not that would just, you know, let him take another unit, but I'm going to rule it doesn't. All right, so now it's a two on one. Destructo on destructo. And the defender won that time. So one on one and, you know, really, Weasel just wants Destructo's units destroyed, so he's loving this. Four and three. So the attacker lost, so the defender keeps. All right, and then, you know, given that, I think he's going for just as much destruction as possible. So he's going to continue with this attack there. He, he thought briefly, or actually I thought briefly, of maybe attacking this one, but he's not going to do that. So it's two and two. Get this die out of the way. Like, looks like the attacker just took it there. And so that's going to remove all that. And he's going to go ahead and have him thin his forces out like so. Sonny's forces in this little waterway here had a, just had an impressive defense. Fending off not one, not two, but three of Weasel's red discs. They were able to do it. And so now he, he's going to continue the fight, though. Maybe. Yeah, I think he And there, Weasel took it. And before I proceed with Junior's turn, I just wanted to show you how diminished his area is um, since he started. He's down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten units. That's four less than what he started. He hadn't even, he hasn't even had a turn yet. He hasn't had a chance to do anything. Um, pretty dramatic. He was here, and he was stretched over here a little bit too. So he's lost some ground, and he didn't do too shabby. He was able. He um, invented a revolver, which let him roll an extra die, and so he he was able to use the revolver to retake these two spaces here. So that let him draw four cards, which should give him a pretty good chance for next turn. Sonny's turn. His setup really um i think it's helping him out he he went for guns he wanted to have a lot of guns in his control and as such he got to place four units and that's without any special cards helping him or anything so it seems like he's got some pretty strong forces that he can work with he has um over here this kind of little arm stretched out he's got three guys set up there and then four on this space and some here. So he can get a, a pretty impressive attacking force. Let's see if he's able to make use of it. And not terribly impressive. He got one attack off and was, thanks to the revolver, was really only able to um, take the space with two. He was attacking with, I think, five or so. Um, just a note, no matter how many forces you attack with, you can only roll three dice from forces. So, um... Junior was defending. He had that revolver pistol, which let him uh, roll an extra dice. So he was defending with two, which let him defend with three against three, and um, was able to hold off for quite some time. Ah, but Sonny has a trick up his sleeve. He's going to reveal this card he played face down. It's a face down card. Face down cards, you just play in front of you, and then you can turn them up at a certain point. Um, activate card upon taking a space, then discard. Then you discard it again at the end of your turn. Um... So he took a space, now he's going to get to put three troops there. And he's going to go ahead and do that. So now he's got a healthy stack of five. I think he'll be able to hold that space. Poor Vaughn was only able to place one unit um, due to her capital. She owned no guns, no nothing. Um, she's using her units to attack this 
this space right here trying to get the politics card from Weasel. Um, Weasel could use the politics card actually to stop her from doing so, but he he is not going to for two reasons. One, he's got some weird issues with women. Um, I'm not sure he entirely respects her, or at least he doesn't want to appear as though he would use politics to defeat her. And two, he's also dealing with Destructo over here, so having the having the politics, which is a once per turn ability, um, could be useful next turn. So he is going to hope that his red defenders can hold off her green attackers, and I don't think he has any face down cards, nope. And so it's going to be a three against two. And that is a smash success for Vaughn. She's crushed him, and she's gonna go ahead and move all her people over. So she has control of politics now. Destructo's turn, he just played a depression on Weasel. So Weasel on his next turn is going to gain no units. Uh, Weasel is losing ground fast here um, under the twin onslaught of both Destructo and Vaughn. Um, and now Destructo is going to make a play for Weasel's capital. So that's gonna be four against two. He definitely has the odds on his side. So we'll see what he gets. And yep, he took it with that one roll. I think he's going to go ahead and go all in there. And that's going to give him quite a few bonuses owning two capitals. If he gets four, he wins the game. It's now Pinky's turn. She played a rather odd card. She played one that made perfect sense, which is this armor, uh, which exists here. Um, she also played this naval blockade. Now, this let her put these two things here. And it says, as long as the blockade is there, which holds, which I guess means both of them, I don't know. It says, as long as the blockade holds, um, Junior will get minus two units on his gain unit pace. I don't know if that means both of them or just one of them. Um, I guess I don't know enough about blockades. I think what I'm going to say... Since there's two spaces, I like that you can interpret with this game. Since there's two spaces, each one's worth minus one. So, you know, as long as this one's here, Junior gets minus one. As long as this one's there, Junior gets minus one. Oh, it should actually be here. <laughs> Silly me. Um, so, in total, it's minus two. And it's do or die time for Weasel. First thing he's going to do is hire federal troops. Um, and so that's going to give him two two fellows, and I guess I'll put them right here on this gun, and then he's going to play another card, Yellow Journalism. News is an account of an event which a newspaper prints in the belief that by doing so it will profit. Alright, so if he attacks a chosen player and he's going to choose Destructo, he gets three units, and I think he wants to try and take his... Um, his, get his capital back. So he is going to move here. He, remember, he doesn't get to gain units in the conventional since this turn because of depression. I discarded it. Um, so he's going back for his capital. It's, how many units does he have there? Five against four, is it? Four, yeah. Now let's see, does he have a card he wants to use? Destructo, I think so. Foreign visitor calls off attack. Chosen player cannot attack your spaces. Activate when attacked. So that's a bummer for him. He's not going to be able to do it. And we're drawn from the 1900 deck now. That could help Weasel next turn. He's got some 1900 cards, which Destructo won't have. I'm assuming they're better than the 1800 cards. I actually haven't looked at them yet. And Junior easily, easily defeated the blockade. Um, it did cause him to have to focus his attention northward, however, and, you know, Sonny's coming up from the south with this large pillar of units, so that could have been bad. Uh, you'll notice his headquarter stack is um, large, but that's because of a particular card he played. Elected War Hero is what it was. He also played Manifest Destiny, which let him um, borrow... Oh, not Manifest Destiny. 
That's not the one he played. He played, um, sorry, I was debating a couple. Transatlantic Cable, which lets him borrow the effects of one of the technologies. And he's borrowing armor, uh, feeling the need to play defensively right now, hoping that perhaps together with um, Pinky, they can stop this sunshine threat from the south. I just found a great use for this chip here. Um, after playing a machine gun, the machine gun technology exists here, um, Sonny played Holy Land, so he gets to pick a space and everyone gets um, an additional reroll against that space for the next turn. So he is going to go ahead and do, I think, this space here. He's, I don't know if this is the smartest strategy, but he's shooting right up the middle of Junior's stuff. Um, so this space is now the Holy Land, and I think that it's kind of hard to tell, it's kind of fuzzy. Germany? Uh, maybe? France. Um, Western Europe is the Holy Land. So there we go. He's got to do his reinforcements and then attack. And with very few casualties, only one disc, despite the fact that he got, he actually got two re-rolls against the Holy Land. Um, Sonny's force, or uh, Junior's force is held out. Um, but, and we're able to take one disc away from Sonny. But that wasn't enough. Sonny is now breathing down Junior's headquarter neck. Has lots of reinforcements next turn if he holds on to these areas. We'll see if he does. Um, we're seeing that the game's going pretty fast for a couple players. We'll see how it goes. And another use for the white discs. Vaughn just called World War... World War, the first World War. I wanted to say World War II, but no, it's the first World War. Um, even though that was in the 1900s, this is an 1800 card, but I guess there could have been a world war in the 1800s. And so she divided everyone into two teams. Um, players on the team can use the, the technical advancements of other people on the team. So Vaughn just made it so she can use both guerrilla warfare, no, not guerrilla warfare. Where is guerrilla warfare? Oh yeah, it's down there. She can use both politics, which she already had, and a machine gun here, as well as armor. So she can't use guerrilla warfare, but she has access to all the other ones. Um, she didn't want Destructo on her team because they're kind of got two very close stacks there. And she, you know, she instinctively, I think, divided the teams up um, evenly, at least in terms of number of people. There's no rule that she had to do that. but. You know, if you put someone on your team, then they also get the advantage of all the technology. And emboldened by the no attack clause of World War, it ends, the benefit ends if anyone attacks their own team. Um, Vaughn is going to take a shot at this headquarters. That would help her in two different ways. Headquarters um, adds to your card draws and also adds to your reinforcements. Vaughn has the least out of all of those, I think. So she's going to go three against three. She gets to re-roll one die for attack. I don't think Destructo gets any advantages here. Three against three. This could be a long one. All right. Ooh, some very good defense dice. Let's match these up. Looks like he had her pretty much. Yep, he got her on all fronts. So she's going to lose three, and I think she's going to end the attack. She's not going to continue after that that beating. And that is going to end it for today. We we got into the 1900s. I think that's a good place to end. Two turns of the game. It's happening very fast. We're seeing that, um, I think, board placement's huge. Uh, always, in, as in mo any multiplayer game, the um, dynamics between people, but uh, geography can affect the um, the dynamics and who one is going to attack quite a bit. Uh, also, we're seeing the, the aggressive players seem to be doing well. Um, by aggressive players, I mean Sonny. He's he's doing very well. And I guess Destructo is also doing quite well. They seem to have the most space, you know, just looking at it, uh, uh, not crunching any numbers in my head or anything, just looking at who's got the most dots on the on the board those two the people coming in from the south seem to be taking it but you know you're seeing these cards are very dramatic um next time we're going to be playing 1900s cards so those could be even more dramatic so things could shift and change and i don't know what's going to happen next time on the real people multi-game solitaire mega tournament